Hey everybody, T.O. from Art Geek Teaching. Today is day 21 of the 100 Day Art Challenge and uh, I'm just going to do a jelly printing session, get my, um, my, my jelly warmed up and um, what I really am looking for today is maybe some neutrals and so some flats. What I am going to work with is just chalk paint. So these are the inexpensive uh, home home deco folk art. I don't know if you can see that. I'll put a link in the bottom. You can get them on on you, know, you can get them from Walmart. You can get them from Hobby Lobby or your other big box store. Of course, you can order them from Amazon. My Amazon links are affiliate links, but I'm sure that you could probably buy these locally. And so um, again, I'm just going to work with some flats on here first. Get some regular full prints. I like the modeled look and um, I'm, I'm using two cheap papers. One, this is just copy paper. All right. And then the second one is uh, this. Is, I'm just going to do some prints on. This is gift tissue paper and this is from the dollar store. It's $1.25 for 20, 35 sheets. I have 20 by 20 so I can get four out of there. Uh, so what is that? 140 sheets for a buck 25 so that's pretty good. I'm going to try to cut this all in one shot. I'm not sure I'll be able to but um, actually I should probably use a, let me get a ruler. I don't know where my steel rule, rule is so that's okay. This will work. It doesn't need to be perfect anyway. That should be about 10. Should give us about 10. I'm just going to see if I can cut this whole thing. Uh, here let me I don't cut very straight, especially because I'm left-handed and I have to cut right-handed. So we'll just give myself a little line there. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a little closer. Again, not that it really matters, but we're going to see what happens here. Well, it's not really liking it, but... Guys, if you steal this from your wife's stash of gift wrapping paper, be sure and tell her so she, so she knows to go get some more. Or, um, you know, really what would be nice is if you just go replace it for her if you take it out of the stash. So anyway, there's some, there's some 10 buys. And, yeah, it looks like these are... I'm not going to get these exactly right because they're not folded. Maybe I can. Here, I'll do these one section at a time maybe. That might be more accurate. Okay, messing around with papers here, geez. Again, this doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really matter because most of these are going to be cut up. So I don't know why I'm messing around with this. Because it's fun? I don't know. All right. And you can see the raggedy edge there. That, I it, I don't care. I mean, these aren't finished pieces, right? At least for me, they're not. If they are finished pieces for you, then, yeah, you should probably, uh, you know, take a little more time. But um, jeepers, these are, this is working material. And so none of this really matters. Oh, that wasn't very bright. This is tissue paper after all. All right, cut these dudes in half. Make sure not to cut my, my jelly. I don't know if you can even see that. This will just give us some working papers. All right, so give me a little bit of pile to pull from here. Oh, there is. I'm going to use that one too. I don't let anything go to waste. All right. I need to open this dude up or what? Got glue. What is that? I don't know. We're just going to rip it. Cut it. Cut it, maybe. All right. Here we go. Finally. Paper, paper. 
paint, put my scissors away. I have a few stencils. We're not going to use those right away. Get a couple brayers. My favorite brayer, this little guy, I don't even know where it came from. Um, I've got some speedball brayers too. They work well. These paints have been sitting around a while, so probably ought to go ahead and shake them up. You know what I don't have is a roll-off sheet. I'm going to get one of those. The moisture level on my jelly is not up to where it needs to be yet, so these first prints are going to be, you know, not, not all that whoop. But that's okay. They can all be used for something. Everything is okay. Let's just see what we have here. That's a wonky color, man. And I'm not letting any of this stuff dry, right? You don't have to have a barren. Sometimes I actually like using my hands because I like that feel. We'll just pull these dudes off as we go along. These are going to be overprinted a couple different times. All right. What else do we have here? Let's get this plate warmed up. Oh. Oh yeah. And we're just gonna print as we move along. I don't know, we'll make 25, 30 plain Janes like this and then maybe we can go and overprint some stuff on them. Oh, yeah. See, I personally like the mottled, kind of grungy look. So these are fine for what I'm looking for. Let's see. Let's get... One of these will work really well with that. And you see, I'm not, I'm not washing off my brayer each time. I'm really letting that go, especially in the beginning here. It takes, I don't know, in the winter here, it takes about 30 minutes-ish to get my jelly plate kind of warmed up. And um, I don't mean warmed up as in temperature warm, but warmed up as in the amount of moisture that's in it. So I just get to play for a little bit. You know, if I'm painting, it's a great warm up, as I've mentioned many, many times. But I, I realize I don't have a lot of flat papers, and so I thought I'd like to go get some, some flats. Oh, yeah. I like it, I like it. That's kind of a wonky color with being mixed with that, yeah? That was sheepskin mixed with whatever's left on the brayer of Tuscan Red. Cool, I like it. All right, keep rolling here. Actually, I think I'm gonna print a piece of this on there. And these are barely going to be long enough, if they're long enough. This is an 8 by 10. I don't know how much is this going to come through. And this is an 8 by 10 um, jelly plate. And so, you know, I'm not sure. Obviously, some of this paper that I cut, because I wasn't careful, it was going to be too short. Okay, not much pulled up on there, which is fine. Shake these dudes up. 
Oops. <laughs> I just zinged that thing across the room, man. All right, here we go. French linen. I actually really like this color. You can see these need to be shaken much better than I'm shaking them, but we'll get in there as we as we get warmed up here. I'm just gonna I'm gonna play here for about an hour, pull some prints. We'll put this one on a tissue. Just cause. No rhyme or reason here, just again warming up my plate and getting some materials to overprint on. Cool, very cool, kind of a flesh tone there. Set that dude aside. Where's my gray? Antique wax. This is a cool color. Uh -oh. These, I, th I don't think I've used my chalk paints for about three months. I have not been painting any wildlife, which is usually where I use my chalks is um, when I do wildlife and resin or, or even uh, Gosh, can't talk in Brer at the same time. Um, when I do resin or encaustic, I usually start with a base of my chalk paints. All right. Coolio, I like it. Good. These are going to dry really fast also. Kind of got to keep these separated. That way I know the ones that I... Uh-oh, there's a chunk. I'll know the ones that I already used and, shake, and shook up. These will give me some nice flat, you know, not shiny, flat is what I'm talking about. Looks like my brayer's got some chunks on it. It's not gonna bother me for right now. We'll see as we move along. I'll just leave them. Good. Yep, jelly's starting to get rolling here. That was the linen I just did. Maui sand sable. And again, I'm not keeping any of this pure, right? I'm not uh, rolling off my brayer. So they're, they're mixing, which again is fine. I'm okay with that. Given that these are just base layers, I'm not going for any particular color. I just wanted some, some flats. And this will definitely give me some flats. Of course, I actually really like my roll-off sheets. So I love being able to, being able to roll off and then use that roll-off sheet too. In fact, I'm going to show you the, the last one I have. Oh, this is kind of crooked. That's all right. Nice gray color. Yeah. Bam. All right. This is a big roll off sheet. And this has got some really cool stuff on it. I don't know if you can see that or not, actually. But it's got some really nice stuff on it that, um, you know, I, I just use that too. So I've got one big sheet. 
that as I was making my other sheets, it came about too. This one's not even open. Wait, Maui Sand, didn't we just do that? Yeah, it was a backup. All right, let's get some blues out. Just got some, what else do I have in here? Oh, yep, yeah, got some greens. Just gonna get some of these out. These are cold, man. It is a uh, heat wave today. <laughs> it was only minus four this morning, so I let the heater go. I warmed up the studio, but obviously the air warms up a lot faster than like paints would, for example. All right, this is black. Sage, that's a pretty color. This one's not started. This is Sage Shadow. I'm going to go ahead and crack him open. Sorry. Man, this is what makes editing take so long. Obviously it needs to be shaken a little bit more. The binder is not mixed with the paint. Put one on tissue. Nice. Now, obviously, if you don't like the marks in there, you could flatten that out. For me, I kind of like them. Sometimes go out of your way to put them in. Let's see if we can get. I wonder if somebody makes a mini shaker. That would be a good invention. That's better. Still not where it needs to be, but it's better. This is kind of a cool color, actually. Well, for my color palette. Some people, I am not a colorist. Many of you know that already, but um, yeah, I, when I look back through my paintings through the last 20 years, I am pretty much a neutral guy. Um, so, sometimes I find it beneficial to try and figure out, especially with Jelly Plate, using those colors I never, never use. And um, it's kind of cool because you can figure out a way to put them in. Oh yeah, I like it. Now again, I know a lot of experienced jelly printers are not getting excited about this. This is just a basic, basic pole, obviously, but I like these plain matte colors. And uh, we're gonna go back in here in just a minute and do some other things with them. Nice. Here's one of the chunks. Now there's quite a bit of paint on on the jelly there. If you just build these things up in layers, I just think they look so cool. Could be, and they can be used for so many different things. Nice.
Very cool, very cool. Some of those colors modeled in the background will keep coming up, yeah. Um, which, again, for me is perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. These are pulling more clean than I'd actually like them to. I like, again, I really like the grunge look. And these are actually pulling fairly clean. It's okay. As we continue working here, it'll, it'll get more better. And as we build up, this is just like uh, painting on a canvas. It's just like Photoshop. It's like everything else, uh, at least in my world of art, and that is layers, layers, layers. Everything has lots of layers. And so where I start really doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have a lot to do with where it ends up. That is one thing about this less expensive um, less expensive paper from the dollar store is the tear strength is really, really low. So if your paint is really sticky on your plate, sometimes they're a little tough to take off without tearing them like you saw. All right, that's cool. Dig it. We'll go through a few more here. Black, not quite ready for black. Oh, this will be good. One of the things I've noticed about the um, chalk paints is they, they really don't have like a selection of browns. You have to mix your browns. Um, they don't have any bright yellows or um, bright oranges. Sometimes that's frustrating when I'm painting, but um, it ends up working out. All right, cool. This is going to be a nice print. Got quite a bit of paint on there. I don't like that. If you don't like the the you know the darker value from where you initially put your paint on you can just roll you know squish it around like that with the roller and that will typically go away um, most of the time i don't mind it but sometimes i'd rather not, not be there cool Okay, again, just planes, plain jeans. I really don't want greens, and so rather than go to orange with that blue on there, we'll head to some reds, purple I could deal with. This is pretty bright for my color palette. But again, by the time <clears throat> we get done adding layers on these things, they will just be peachy. Just be peachy, oh yeah. See how it picks up that stuff in the background? Obviously, that's one of the things I'm trying to get. Haven't been so good at it yet, but we're getting there. This is Uh, oh, there it is, canary, canary yellow. Take the chunkies off. You can tell these have not been really used very much in the near past. I get that stirred. There we go.
Cool. Now we're getting closer. Got some chunkies. Those are just coming from the uh, all the dried paint I have hanging out. Good. Now we're looking more like I want to look. I'm going to go ahead and roll this off just on this so I can get some of the bigger chunks out of there. I don't like the line consistent. So, I mean, if there's a line there, I'm okay with it, but I don't want it a consistent line on all of them. So mix it up a little bit, take some of them out. Okay, what have I... Not used. Imperial. I don't know if we've got one of those. Then we'll head back. I don't think I have any of my teals. I've got one really nice teal. Yeah, there it is. That I absolutely love. Don't I already have this dude? Yeah, Imperial. That was a backup. <clears throat> so we'll put this guy on. This is really cool. This is a vintage teal, and I really like it. Let's see if it prints well with that other... Okay. Oh, needs a little more shaking. We'll pull that off there. It's usually not that green. Plus, I can smell it. It's uh, spoiled. We'll pull this one off on a tissue. Very nice, very nice. I literally have no idea if you can see these because the sun is kind of right in my eyes. Let's get some of that binder worked up. There we go, that's mucho better. It's still not quite where it needs to be, but it's better. Good. Let's get my black on there. Actually, no, let's get my, where's my cream? I wanna see if I can pick up that stuff. Where'd he go? My light, there it is, linen, yeah. And I think we've got, maybe I'll print two or three more papers and then we'll just go through and start over printing some stencils and We'll use some inks. Let's 
Sometime this week I'm going to do a jelly print session where I'm using some, using my um, Posca pens. I love Posca pens. And Posca pens and a jelly plate are a combination that's really hard to beat. So I'm hoping to do that the next, I might have to wait till next weekend because I need a couple hours. We'll see what the week brings. Oh yeah, most cool. Love it, love it, love it. All right, we're gonna do uh, just a couple more of these. I do want some green underneath that linen. So if I can get this dude shaken up. There we go. Nice. Really like that color. Good. We'll go back to, that's my black. We'll go back to some of my darkers here. It's getting really nice and hydrated, so it's starting to play a lot nicer. Good. Oops. Left some of that up there. That's awesome. Where's my linen again? We'll use... What is this? Chateau. This is a little bit, it, this should look good with that blue though. So again, we are on the cheap here. These paints are very inexpensive. The paper is very inexpensive. So we are getting some really, I don't like that. We're getting some really cheapo papers to use. You can never have enough jelly papers hanging out, right? Whoops. At least that's kind of my thought. Make these things in the books, use them in the fine art collage pieces that I do. Oh gosh, all kinds of things. Put them in a book by themselves. And actually, yeah, actually the, uh, I've got some prints that I just, just on their own, prints on their own, straight off the jelly that look really cool as an abstract piece. So, all right, this will be the last one and then we'll, maybe we'll come back with some, uh, What are they called? Stencils. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. I didn't do very many, uh, I really didn't do very many tissue. That's okay. Oh yeah, this is gonna be cool. And you can, of course, go in there and draw. Uh, maybe we'll just do that on the next. I'll do one more. Oh yeah, nice. Bam. Gotta love that. Okay, what I was gonna say is, of course, you can go in. Let's just choose. Here's my. You can go in on the on the pad, and once you get your um, pad inked up, your jelly plate inked up or painted up, I guess the proper term. It's not ink. 
but when you get it loaded, how's that? Um, then we can go back in there. That's a cool plum color. This would look good with that linen too. Um, you can go in there and take something dull. Get that wiped off. Take something dull and just mark make. You just wanna make sure it's nothing sharp. This is a fairly dull pencil. You know, I'm gonna just draw some quick marks. You just wanna make sure you're not using anything sharp. Don't ruin your plate. And if you wanna do like a traditional monoprint where you're actually taking some time and developing a really cool uh, image that is you know full of value and everything, you could do that too. That's usually not my bailiwick on a plate, but certainly can be done. All right, so let's move ahead. I'm gonna go back to some of these dudes and try to find some colors that are that would go well with them. This guy will give him. Uh, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of stay neutral. I'm just going to pull out a stencil here. Come on. I'm not going to be too picky on having it be super even or anything like that. I'm just going to throw it on there. It's pretty light, you can see. That's a squeaky little devil. And we're just going to do layer after layer on these things, right? So nothing's right, nothing's wrong. This is where my baron will be good. See if I can go in each one of those real quickly. Pull up some of that paint. Oh, there's a chunk in there. Feels like wire. What is that? Oh, it's a big old hunking piece of paint. All right, again, you can see this, but it's subtle. Good. And now we can pull this guy up, and we have the negative impression in there. So... We'll find one that it could go on to. It could go on to this one, no problem. And it'll be pretty light, right? But that's okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Very nice roll through a couple oh here's a here's a homemade one we'll do uh what do we have next how about black on that guy I probably should replace my jelly plate one of these days. This thing is like, I don't even know, 15 years old or something. And it still does a pretty good job, but for what I do, it works great. But if I wanted anything super smooth, then it probably wouldn't do it. All right, so we're going to use this guy to start with. Put him on there. And these are just going to be little blobbies, right, because it's so high. Not even sure they can touch. They'll just touch and probably won't even touch. Once in a while they'll touch. This is gonna be. Yeah, there's only a couple of them. Weird. Yeah, good. This is what we're looking for though. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this. This was one of my roll-off sheets. So we'll just go ahead and print this bubber. Put him on there. Good. Get the brayer, I mean the baron. Good. 
good. Oh yeah. It's kind of cool. A little darker than I would have liked, but you know, whatever. I gotta find a place to put these done ones or first. There we go. All right, what are we gonna do? Let's look at something we can use this. You know what? That maroon color would be amazing on that. Oh yeah. It's gonna pick up some of that black. And actually, I'm gonna do a full print of that first. Because that's gonna be kind of cool. With that black underneath. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's awesome. That'll look good with some gold or white. Okay. Let's do that one more time. What was I looking at? Oh, yeah. Come on. Must have some goobers in the bottom. We were going to look at something for that guy. What do I have? What do I have? There we go. Cool. And then we have that print on there as well. Uh, let's see, we got maroon. That's pretty good on this piece. Nice. <clears throat> this one I particularly like. It's kind of cool. What else we got going on here? Uh, we got a couple more lights. So, we got this guy. It would look good with this. Again, I didn't clean, so we'll see what we get with this. I'm gonna put some, well, no, I won't either. Let's see. There's a random, <laughs> a random homemade one that I think what I'll do is this first. Because it again is pretty deep. It's not going to pull a lot of stuff off between there without really getting in there. So Cool. These guys are always the um, the negative space when you print is um, you know because of the glue is so tall doesn't always work. 
but when you pull it up and then you print that positive space, um, usually those look kind of cool. So we'll just see what happens here. All right. Eh. Pull up some of this. Might be all right. Interesting. Pull this dude up. Nice. That's interesting. Okay, here's another light dude. This would go well with several different colors. Let's choose, um, how about one of our teals or our blues? And we're getting all discombobulated here. Should probably break this off. What do we want here? Maroon again, no blue. These work um, pretty well with resin also. Um, although I will say that I had much better, um, well, not, not really luck. I mean, resin works great with jelly prints in general, but I really like the, all right, gotta find my <laughs> runaway stencils, man. Um, I really like the kind of brighter, um, bolder colors that you can get with resin. Um, even though my color palette usually doesn't lend itself to that very well, um, I think it, it, they work better on Yupo paper. I shouldn't say better, they just, it's different. Could not find the one I was looking for, but that's okay. It's fine, it's all good. I thought I got them out, but evidently I didn't. So we'll have a negative and positive print from this. Where's my Baron? There it is. Cool. See, these would be nice book book um, covers or to be made into a book. I mean, there's a number of different things we can do with these things. Okay, we're going to get a print off of this guy, too. See what we have for colors over there. Whoops. Um, oh, yeah, might look good on this dude. A lot of dead space in here, a lot of dead space. That's all right. Well, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's more muted than, all right, good. Really like my stencil like that. These others, these other dudes are, these are some homemade ones that I haven't even tried yet, so we're gonna try some of those. What do we got here? Blue, let's go white. Maybe. You can see that chunk on there.
These are kind of fun. I should show you how to make these. I mean, these are so basic, but um, a lot of people like to make them. I like to make them. They're really kind of cool. Let's see. Do I have anything else I can use? I'm going to do a brand new one. Um, they're just hot glue in random kind of designs. And they work pretty well. They actually, like mine, I left quote unquote tall. I'll show you in just a sec here. Um, if, if I would have smushed them down, smashed them down, uh, when I was printing, then I could have had them much more, you know, I could have had them flatter and maybe they'll work better that way. But um, I don't really, I mean, I'm a set it and forget it kind of guy. I don't really want to go through all of that um, just to make them a little more flat. I don't mind the randomness that you get when they're built like this. There's going to be a lot of white. That's kind of cool, though. Um, pull this dude up. But let me see if I can show you. See how, um, first of all, I leave all of the little goos in there. Not everybody does. Not everybody likes that. But you can see, if you look at it from the side, it's not flat on top, right? It's rounded. And um, that kind of can create some, some issues, you know. So anyway, when you're making those, you could put a book over them or something and flatten them out as it's curing, you know, cooling down as it were, and then you wouldn't have that problem. But again, I kind of don't mind it. I like the prints they make. Yeah. Totally random. Can't be done again. All right, what do we got? We got this dude. We've got... Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, this really cool one. Got some really cool colors. We're gonna get back into these guys for a sec. Some of these. All right, we're going. We're going with these guys next. Where's my? Oh yeah, I was gonna say I have a gray somewhere. Ben's wearing white. Let's move over to this guy. Ah. Nice. That must be one of the newer paints. It rolls out so much nicer than all of the rest of them, so it must be one of the newer ones. Usually, especially these paints, they don't they don't stick around long. They don't last long in my studio. I use them up pretty fast. All right, where's my hold tight while I find my stencils? Big box of stencils, what'd they do with you? All right, here we go, found them. These didn't go very far. I will use that one on here. Cool. Baron. There we go. Good. Pull this dude up. Pull this dude up. I think this color would actually look pretty good. Here, how about this red one? Nice. All right, we're going to leave that on there. Then we are going to go with Castle.
Most of that is, mm, well, I shouldn't say most. A lot of that's not going to stay right because it's so wet. We'll see what happens. Some of it. Put him back up here. Put this guy on here, so if we can get a ghost print from that. Not much on there. Just a little. Yeah. Okay, just a few others left here that I wanna go through. That's black. Where's my little teal? Here it is. I'm going to mix this with a little bit of white. If I can get it out. There it is. Actually, a little bit of cream. This is sheepskin. Mix those two dudes together. Give us a little baby blue. Let's see. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Really like this stencil. It's too small, though. I wish I had a full size one. I need to make one of that. All right, almost done here. We're going to do a few more, and then actually I think what I'll do is go to some, uh, uh, go to some sprays. All right, we can pull a ghosty off of that. What do we have? What do we have? Um... This is probably light enough. Good. Light. We'll go with our castle. Oop. Might be too much paint there. Break that off a little bit. Pull this up and just put it down. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I'm just going to put it down on top of this other piece. And it will pull some of that paint. Not very much. It'll just be a little bit. This one. Like that. That looks good. Probably, if I, I'm gonna stick this on here. I'll just be able to pick up a little bit more. The back of this is gonna pick up. Oh, I didn't have very much on it. Could have left that on there, that was nice. Okay, this one still needs something. So we're getting down to it. Um, why don't I get some of my sprays? And we'll do a couple of these with spray as they are. So let me look. Got to figure out what I did with my sprays. They should be up here. Yep. 
What do I have? Uh, this is fuchsia, vibrant turquoise, cherry pie, crushed grape. Those are the only ones I actually have, um, I think, in sprays. And so I just want to show you, let's see, what are we going to look with this one? Here, we'll just try. This is funky fuchsia. I'll just put a spray on just like that, nothing else. And you can see it's on there pretty thick, right? So it's going to pull that up. A lot of it is going to be, sorry, a lot of it is going to be smushed out, but you'll see what we get here. It just barely picks it up. Now, if I were to do it here, I'll do another one that is just, pull it back a little bit. If you just have no paint on there and it's just ink, it's a little bit different story. You can see that there's a lot more ink on there than you think there is. Okay, so that is just by itself the inks. You could do something with that for sure. Let's go. Where's my pinky one? Here it is. It'll pick up some of that. Okay. Those are going to be too dark. What else do I have that I could use? Show you one on. Here, I think this will show up on here. Oh, wait. I already did that guy. Put those back in there. Okay, I think I'll just finish these dudes up a little bit. I don't know how much of this we'll keep. See, this paper is coming along nicely. We'll put him over here in the pile. Put these guys back up so they're not in the way. What would look nice with this, I think? Too late now. I dropped it. All right, here we go. My dog's going crazy. Gidgey. Don't mind that so much. This one will probably be a little bit better print. Put it on this guy. There we go. All right. I'm going to put some yellow on this guy.
about, there we go. Okay, I think that's going to call it good for today. I'm going to clean up the rest of my papers, see if I missed anything, and uh, I'll probably come back with stamps or something on top of those, give them another couple coats. Um, here, let me put a piece of paper down. And we will go through some of the, some of the prints really quickly. Some of them are just meh. But that's usually the case, right? And you just keep working with them or you use them in parts and pieces. Um, this is a roll-off sheet, right? One of the, one of the better prints. <laughs> this one I kind of like, especially if I uh, work some gold into that. That'd be kind of cool. Most of these, I don't know, this wasn't the this one I actually really like. This one is good. Nice. Yeah, some of these are okay. Most of these need some work, right? You could use them like they are, but um, I would choose to do a little bit more work on them. And I think I have three or four plain pieces left. But, um, you know, we printed for, I don't even know, 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, something like that. And uh, got some, some things that we'll, we could start to use for sure. And um, probably some that we actually could use. And didn't make too bad of a mess. That one's interesting. Only a few tissues. I kind of neglected the tissue side of things. Woo. Got a hole now. All right. Very good. Have an amazing day.